Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral reduced hearing due to lateral earwax plugs. When we say lateral, we mean towards the entrance and in both ears, the patient had this plug of earwax, but also dead skin, dead keratin that had failed to migrate out of the ear. And in both instances, so for both ears, the removal of the earwax and dead skin plug was relatively straightforward. As you can see, I managed to hook it out. However, upon reinspection of the ear, the patient had a very thick um, oxidized layer of dead skin that was lining the entire ear canal right up to the eardrum. And you can begin to see this skin here. So I'm just using a Jobson horn to slowly bring this piece of skin out of the ear and it was very apparent as well uh, upon examining the ear that the patient had been getting water inside and what happened is that this skin had macerated. Our skin is hydrophilic so it attracted by water and it absorbs water however if it over absorbs water so if you've got water in your ear and you're allowing it to soak the skin um, uh, absorbs the water, it overhydrates, which causes the skin cells to then burst from the membranes. And that results in macerated, very soft, mushy skin. And that then provides the perfect breeding ground for bacteria and fungi to incubate and colonize the inside of the ear. So what I'm trying to do now is remove this thick layer of skin one of the giveaways as well is when you visualise the eardrum, which you will in a minute, the eardrum has become very wrinkly. And again, that's due to the maceration of skin. It's, it's very, that's the giveaway sign for me. Um, when I examine someone's ears, if it, the eardrum looks wrinkly, then I know they've been exposed to um, excess water. And ideally, we want to avoid water in our ears to begin with. A lot of people who may suffer from dry skin, they... Um, feel that if they get water in there, it might hydrate it. However, that has the opposite effect. So just say you rinse your ear, so you're not soaking your ear, but you just rinse your ear out with water. The surface of the ear canal is lined with essential moisturising factors. So um, that's a combination of um, fatty um, lipids, oils secreted by the sebaceous glands and the ceremonious glands within the ear. And these um, moisturising agents, these fatty oils and sweats, they provide a hydrophobic protective layer. So um, it helps to retain internal moisture within the skin inside. And if you get water inside, the water leaches these oils out of the ear, so they get washed away, which then means we don't have this protective oils on the surface of our skin, uh, which then allows the, the internal water moisture within the skin cells to rise to the surface where it then evaporates. So um, we may think we're helping our ears if they're dry by getting water in, but long term you're actually making it worse. So if you are someone who suffers from dry skin, the best real treatment would be to, it possibly means that your ears are not naturally producing these oils, so um, the sebum and the oilous, or oily sweat. So you can then use um, medical grade olive oil spray, for example, uh, on a weekly basis, which then allows the oil to uh, lubricate and protect and coat the ear canal and eardrum to help it retain internal moisture and repel external water and also um, medical grade olive oil is slightly acidic and that our ears should be slightly acidic the acidity in our ears is quite important because it helps to inhibit harmful bacteria and fungi growth quite often if you've got an outer ear infection so otitis externa your ph level of the ear would be elevated so it becomes more alkaline and quite often many um, um, antibacterial um, ear sprays do contain acetic acid which is around two or three um, on the pH scale so it's quite acidic solution. So I'm just using the fine end now to peel away the anterior layer of skin. You can see that I've removed a lot of skin already. We've used the forceps and underneath is a nice healthier looking um, ear canal. 
There is one part of the year, and I don't know whether you've noticed it already, and I'm, we are going to focus on it um, as the video um, continues. It's, ju it's just at the bottom of the screen there. There's a, a piece of hardened keratin that's embedded within the canal wall, and it could be underneath that keratin we've got some exposed bone, and that will need to be removed. Um, I did try and remove it today, but it was rock solid. It was... Every time I made contact with it, it was so hard that the instrument would glide off it. And so uh, I've referred the patient to ENT and prior, because even upon removal, which may not be possible um, just during a normal outpatient appointment, the patient may need a subsequent appointment where some um, topical um, anesthesia, so some local anesthetic may be injected or applied into the ear and it's very likely that the patient will need a CT scan just to get an idea of what's going on with the surrounding bone because if that bone gets infected, so we call it a canal cleshiotoma, that's essentially what I'm concerned about. It, it, canal cleshiotoma is when skin that lines the ear canal, instead of dying and shedding and migrating out of the ear, it um, forms um, and embeds itself within the ear canal and a canal cleshiotoma, so just dead skin, keratin then gets infected and it can be quite dangerous actually can this infection can spread all the way uh, around the ear and it it's it can infect the bone the temporal bone um, called that osteomyelitis and, and this infection can then spread upwards towards the skull base or just below the brain um, it can spread to the bone behind the ear the mastoid bone around the jaw area it can affect the facial nerve and because um, the brain is just on top of the ears. So you've got the, the, the meninges and uh, it's a protective um, buffer um, um, solution which surrounds the brain. It's a fluid that en engulfs the brain, protecting it from uh, trauma. And the, 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 the dura, which is the, the layer of the meninges that's most nearest to the ear, that can get infected if the bone around the ear is infected. So it can be quite dangerous. So uh, for that reason, we don't want to take anything by chance. I did try and remove it myself today, but um, as I said, it was too hard. Uh, the patient will need to use some sodium bicarbonate drops for about a week or two prior to their appointment with ENT to really, really soften that keratin. And I've just put some olive oil in into the ear because there was a bit of dead skin that was a bit more adhered both laterally here near the entrance and also near the eardrum and once more I'm just using the fine end to peel this away the patient emailed us back the following day just to um, say how amazing they found the treatment and they're very pleased indeed so you can see the skin that's quite aged it's oxidized in most of our ears, the skin would migrate out of the ear. In this particular patient, it hasn't. It's, it's just remained on the surface of the canal wall. And with skin, it is a quite difficult thing to remove because it's lining the canal wall, which means we're having to, um, with the instrument, come in close contact with the canal wall itself. And when we're on the the outer third, the cartilaginous portion, we can apply a bit of pressure. Um, the cartilaginous portion is not as sensitive as the bony part of the ear canal, the inner two thirds. And of course, cartilage is somewhat semi flexible in nature. Um, the bony part of the ear canal, however, is a different story. It's a very thin layer of skin, 0 0.1 millis in thickness, and it's just the outer layer of skin. Skin, you have three, typically three three layers, you have the epidermis layer, the outermost layer of skin, then, which is a, the, the protective layer of the skin. It protects the inner um, layers of skin from infection. You then have the dermis, which is the middle layer, and that's where the hair follicles are found. And then the innermost layer is a fatty subcutaneous layer, and it just helps to provide a buffer. And that then rests, um, if, on, if it's on cartilage, you've got uh, perichondrium tissue, which helps to provide um, blood supply and nutrients to the skin and the cartilage which then sits underneath that. On the bony part of the ear canal, you've just got that outer layer, that um, epidermis layer, and then 
the, the tissue underneath that's called periosteome and that sits on the bony part of the ear canal. So the periosteome um, is the equivalent to perichondrium tissue, but periosteome sits on the bone, whereas perichondrium sits on the cartilage. You can see that character. I've tried to remove it. It's almost like a pothole in there, so that would definitely need to be to further investigate. We don't know how deep and aggressive this buildup of keratin is. Again, I'm just trying to chisel it. It was becoming a bit uncomfortable for the patient as well, so we just stopped at that stage. And we wouldn't have noticed that if we didn't remove the skin. So although I removed that plug of skin and keratin almost immediately at the entrance, like we are going to be doing on this, the right ear too, if I had left that skin and not removed it, we would have probably have missed that buildup of dead skin and it may have got worse. So with the right ear, this patient's right ear was very hairy at the entrance and on occasions it was smearing the the the, the tip of the endoscope, the lens. So you can see it's a bit blurry at times. So I managed to hook that out. Once more, I got this layer of skin just at the entrance. Going to peel it away. And again, the skin's very dry, and the patient did advise that they do wash their ears out most days, and to be re reinstructed. It's something growing up. I was never um, made aware of to avoid water in your ear. Um, it's only once I became an audiologist that I. I um, was informed and learned through experience that water can is not advisable to get in the ear and it can lead to an infection swimmers ear it's not to say that you can get a hundred people for example and every of those hundred people only probably a small percentage will get swimmers ear but we, we be very hard to predict who those individuals are and once you've had an ear infection of that sort and again this is just anecdotal through my own experience uh, an individual then becomes just more prone to develop it, developing future infections and it can be a chronic persistent issue for them. Just using the forceps again, I'm just trying to get a good grip on the anterior canal wall. And this skin is really thick and I'm just wriggling the forceps. You can see just to trying to detach the skin. I've got a reasonable size of sheet of skin out there. So the skin's almost like wallpaper uh, that you're trying to remove but it's strongly attached to the wall and that's why I've used a bit of oil just to soften the skin a little bit to break down that that bond that adhesiveness but even with forceps it's still really tightly attached to the canal wall got to be careful we don't that bottom jaw doesn't graze and the tip of the bottom jaw doesn't poke into the bony part of the ear canal so I'm just doing it slowly I'm getting a grip bringing it forwards, getting a grip again, bringing it forwards. And again, another sizable piece of skin. So this skin has just recently died and it's recently shedded, but it hasn't migrated. Um, you can tell that by the colour, it's a more paler colour. The darker skin, you can see there's some darker shades there, that's older skin, that's oxidised, it's been exposed to oxygen and it's, um, you've got all the uh, oxygen scavengers and free radicals that then um, invade the, the dead skin and oxidize it. As the skin dies as well, you have a higher concentration of keratin, which then also gives it this more, more yellowy appearance. Once again, I'm just gonna use the forceps, just gonna pinch it at the top and bring it out. patient has got quite a bendy ear canal. You will see that a bit later on. There's a bit of dead skin in the anterior recess. So as we approach the eardrum, the ear canal narrows and it widens back out again. And where it widens, it creates a little recess at the front part of the ear canal adjacent to the eardrum. We call that the anterior recess. Um, as the ear canal narrows and widens again, it also creates a little base and a little trench at the base of the ear canal near the eardrum. We call that the inferior recess. So I've just put some oil in. You can see how it's helped to soften the skin and I'm just being so delicate here, trying to slowly peel this away without touching the canal wall. Just hovering over just to see if it separates. Going to the back part of the ear canal to start. We're just finding that, that spot to start peeling with. Again, it's like when you're peeling um, wallpaper, you've got to find that starting point. And once you've found it, it then makes the 
peeling of the rest of the wallpaper on this case of skin just that little bit easier. Because the ear canal does narrow here, I've got to be careful with how much force I use with the fine end because what I'm trying to do is get a suction grip and then peel the skin away, which means taking the suction probe in the opposite direction. But if I overdo it, I could inadvertently bump into the opposite side of the ear canal. So this is the front part, the anterior recess. I've just bent the tip, you may see that, and that allows me better access into the anterior recess which is still, still not visible yet. You will see it in a moment. So if you look at the top where that skin is peeling from the roof, that's now part of the anterior recess. I'm just going back to the back part of the ear canal, trying to peel it more. Because I'm trying to, when I'm peeling it on the back part, I'm getting the suction grip and I'm actually moving the suction probes towards and away, um, so towards the eardrum and away from the back part of the ear canal. So. Again, I can't push it away too far in front because there's always a risk of making contact with the drum. And I've managed to peel that back layer of dead skin. It's just this at the bottom. Now, that's the inferior recess we'll be working in now. That skin, it goes down into the, the little trench basin. I'm just really wriggling it left to right. Using forceps this deep, it would be a bit difficult with this patient because you can see the area is quite narrow and the forceps, although they're micro forceps, um, there was very little room for manoeuvre there. But we're, we are succeeding with the fine end, so I'm just continuing. You can see that skin came away from the inferior recess. And this remaining skin you're going to see me try and remove now. This is all from the anterior recess. And I wasn't able to get all of it. The patient did find it slightly uncomfortable, so we left it. Um, patient comfort always comes first. And yes, ideally, I would want to remove the skin, but long term, is it really going to cause this patient? Is it going to affect the hearing dramatically? No, the reason for it is more preventative, just to, because I don't think the skin's going to peel away and migrate by itself. But it's very likely this patient's going to have to have regular cleaning of their ears in any case, because this is a, a skin condition, I think, that is going to be a persistent one for the patient. So... See, it's a really quite a deep recess there, and I'm going to just try once more. Well, I'm going to the back part of the ear canal, see if I can just peel the skin across from left to right. And then I'm going to go back to the anterior recess, trying to get a bit of a grip. And although I'm not making contact with the canal wall, you can see there's no physical contact there. The patient just found it uncomfortable, so it's very likely that as the skin is coming away from the canal wall, the patient is feeling that. And I just said, I'm going to leave it at that stage. Both ears are clear nonetheless. I've referred the patient to, the, to, the, uh, to an ENT specialist regards to the left ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.